let me ask you about P. Doom. <laughs> Probability of doom. That's just fun to say, but not fun to experience. Uh, what is to you the probability that AI eventually kills all or most humans, also known as probability of doom? I'm not a fan of that calculation. I think it's uh, people just throw numbers out there. Uh, it's a very sloppy calculation, right? To calculate a probability, you know, let's say you model the world as some sort of Markov process, if you have enough variables or hidden Markov process, you need to do a stochastic path integral through the space of all possible futures, not just the futures that your brain naturally steers towards, right? Um, I think that the estimators of PDOOM are biased because of our biology, right? We're, we've evolved to uh, have bias sampling towards negative futures that are scary because that was an evolutionary optimum, right? And so people that are of, let's say, higher neuro neuroticism will just think of uh, negative futures where everything goes wrong all day, every day, and, and claim that they're doing unbiased sampling. And, and in a sense, like they're not normalizing for the space of all possibilities and the space of all possibilities is like super exponentially large. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to have this estimate. And in general, I don't think that we can predict the future with, with that much granularity because of, of chaos, right? If you have a complex system, you have some uncertainty and a couple of variables. If you let time evolve, you have this concept of a, a Lyapunov exponent, right? A bit of fuzz becomes a lot of fuzz in our estimate, exponentially so uh, over time. And um, I think we, we need to show some humility uh, that we can't actually predict the future. All we know, the only prior we have is the laws of physics. And that's, that's what we're arguing for. The laws of physics say the system will wanna grow. And subsystems that are optimized for growth are more, and replication are more likely in the future. And so we should aim to maximize our current mutual information with the future. And the path towards that is for us to accelerate rather than decelerate. So I don't have a P-Doom because I think that, you know, similar to the quantum supremacy experiment at Google, I was in the room when they were running the simulations for that. That was an example of a quantum chaotic system where you, you cannot even estimate probabilities of certain outcomes uh, with even the biggest supercomputer in the world, right? And um, so that's an example of chaos. And I think the system is far too chaotic for anybody to have an accurate uh, estimate of the likelihood of certain futures. If they were that good, I think they would be very rich uh, trading on the stock market. But nevertheless, it's true that humans are biased, grounded in our evolutionary biology, scared of everything that can kill us. But we can still imagine different trajectories that can kill us. We don't know uh, all the other ones that don't necessarily, but it's still, I think, useful combined with some basic intuition grounded in human history to reason about like what like looking at geopolitics, looking at basics of human nature, mm. how can powerful technology hurt a lot of people? And it just seems in, grounded in that, looking at nuclear weapons, you can start to estimate P doom in this, in a, maybe in a more philosophical sense, not, not a mathematical one. Philosophical meaning like, is there, a chance? Does human nature tend towards that or not? I, I think to me, one of the biggest existential risks would be the concentration of the power of AI in the hands of the very few, especially if it's a mix between the companies that control the flow of information and the government, because that could uh, set things up for a sort of dystopian future where only a very few, an oligopoly in the government have AI and they could 
even convince the public that AI never existed. Mm -hmm. And that opens up sort of these scenarios for authoritarian centralized control, which to me is the, the darkest timeline. And the reality is that we have, we have a prior, we have a data-driven prior of these things happening, right? When you give too much power, when you centralize power too much, um, humans do horrible things, right? Um, and to me, that has a much higher likelihood in my Bayesian inference than uh, sci-fi based priors, right? Like my prior came from the Terminator movie. Um, and so when I talk to these AI doomers, I just ask them to trace a path through this Markov chain of events that would lead to our doom, right? And to actually give me a good probability for each transition. And very often there's a unphysical or highly unlikely transition in that chain, right? But of course we're wired to fear things and we're wired to respond to danger and we're wired to deem the unknown to be dangerous because that's a good heuristic for survival, right? But there's much more to lose out of fear. Uh, we have so much to lose, so much upside to lose by preemptively stopping the positive futures from, from happening out of fear. Um, and so I think that we shouldn't uh, give in to fear uh, fear is the mind killer. I think it's also the civilization killer. We can still think about the various ways things go wrong. For example, the founding fathers of this, uh, the United States thought about human nature and that's why the, there's a discussion about the freedoms that are necessary. They really deeply deliberated about that. And I think the same could possibly be done for AGI. It is true that history, human history shows that we tend towards centralization, or at least when we achieve centralization, a lot of bad stuff happens. When there's a dictator, a lot of dark, bad things happen. The question is, can AGI become that dictator? Can AGI, when developed, become the centralizer? Because of its power, maybe it has the same, because of the alignment of humans perhaps, the same tendencies the same uh, Stalin-like tendencies to centralize and manage centrally, mm -hmm. the allocation of resources. And you can even see that as a compelling argument on the surface level. Well, AGI is so much smarter, so much more efficient, so much better at allocating resources. Why don't we outsource it to the AGI? And then mm -hmm. eventually, whatever forces that uh, corrupt the human mind with power could do the same for AGI. It would just say, well, humans are dispensable. We'll get rid of them. Do the Jonathan Swift modest proposal from a few centuries ago, I think the 1700s, when he satirically suggested that, I think it's in Ireland, that the, the, the children of poor people are fed as food to the rich people, and that would be a good idea because it decreases the amount of poor people and gives extra income to the poor people. So it's on several accounts decreases the amount of poor people. Therefore, more people become rich. Uh, of course, it m misses a fundamental piece here that's hard to put into a mathematical equation of the basic value of human life. So all of that to say, are you concerned about AGI being the very centralizer of power that you just talked about? I do think that um, right now there's a bias towards over centralization of AI because of uh, compute density and centralization centralization of data and how we're training uh, models. Um, I think over time we're going to run out of data to scrape over the internet, and I think that well, actually I'm working on increasing the compute density mm -hmm. so that compute can be everywhere and acquire information and test hypotheses in the environment in a distributed uh, fashion. I think that fundamentally centralized cybernetic control, so having one intelligence that is massive, that you know fuses many sensors, 
and is trying to perceive the world accurately, predict it accurately, predict many, many variables, and control it, right? enact its will upon the world, I think that's just never been the optimum, right? Like, let's say you have uh, a company, you know, if you have a company, I don't know, of 10,000 people that all report to the CEO, even if that CEO is an AI, I think it would struggle to fuse all of the information that is coming to it and then predict the whole system and then to en enact its, its will. What has emerged in nature and in corporations and all sorts of systems is a notion of sort of hierarchical cybernetic control, right? You have, uh, you know, in a company it would be, you have like the individual contributors, they're self-interested and, and, and uh, they're trying to achieve their, their tasks and they, they have a, a fine, in terms of time and space, if you will, control loop and, and, and field of perception, right? Um, they have their code base. Let's say you're in a software company, they have their code base, they iterate it on it. Uh, intraday, right? And then the management maybe checks in, it has a wider scope. It has, let's say five reports, right? And then it samples each uh, person's update once per week. And then you can go up the chain and you have larger time scale and, and greater scope. And that seems to have emerged as sort of the the optimal way to, to control systems. And, and really that's what capitalism gives us, right? You have these these hierarchies and you can even have like parent companies and so on. And so that is far more fault tolerant. In quantum computing, that's my field I came from, we have a, a concept of, of this fault tolerance and quantum error correction, right? Quantum error correction is detecting a fault that came from noise, predicting how it's propagated through the system and then correcting it, right? So it's a cybernetic loop. And it turns out that uh, decoders uh, that are hierarchical and at each level the hierarchy are local uh, perform the best by far and are far more fault tolerant. And the reason is if you have a non-local decoder, then you have one fault at, at this uh, control node and the whole system sort of crashes. Similarly to if you have, uh, you know, uh, one CEO that everybody reports to, and that CEO goes on vacation, the whole company comes to a crawl, right? Um, and so to me, I think that, yes, we're seeing a tendency towards centralization of AI, but I think there's gonna be a correction over time where intelligence is gonna go closer to the perception and we're gonna, we're gonna break up AI into um, um, smaller subsystems that communicate with one another and form a sort of meta uh, system. So if you look at the hierarchies there in the world today, there's nations and those are hierarchical, but in relation to each other, nations are anarchic. So it's an anarchy. Mm. Would you, do you foresee a world like this where there's not a over, what'd you call it? A centralized cybernetic control. L centralized locus of control. Yeah. Is the, so like that's suboptimal you're saying. Yeah. So it would be always a state of competition at the very yeah. top level. Yeah, just like, you know, in a company, you may have like uh, two units working on similar technology and competing with one another and you you prune the one that performs not as well, right? And that's a sort of selection process for a tree or a product gets killed, right? And then a whole org gets fired. And that's this process of of trying new things and and, and shedding old things that didn't work is this, it's what gives us adaptability and helps us converge on, uh, you know, the technologies and things to do that are most good. I just hope there's not a failure mode that's unique to AGI versus humans, because you're describing human systems mostly right now. Right. I just hope when there's a monopoly on AGI in one company that we'll see the same thing we see with humans, which is another company will spring up and start competing I mean, that's been the case so far, right? Yeah. We have OpenAI, we have Anthropic, now we have XAI, uh, you know, we had Meta even for open source, was, and now we have Mistral, right? Which is highly competitive. And so that's the beauty of capitalism. You don't have to trust any one party too much because we're kind of always hedging our bets at every level. There's always competition and that's the most 
um, beautiful thing to me, at least, is that the whole system is always shifting and always adapting. And maintaining that dynamism is how we avoid tyranny, right? Ma making sure that um, everyone has access to to these tools, to, to these models, and can contribute to the research uh, um, avoids a sort of neural tyranny where very few pe pe people have control over AI for the world and, and use it to oppress uh, those around them.